This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Right, let's go through and pull it together with a numerical example to help you understand what's happening with your defined benefit scheme. The example here is more likely to be used by the examiner that feeds into question number one within group accounts. So it's likely to be that the parent has a defined benefit scheme and you need to account for that defined benefit scheme with the numbers uh, in the parents' books. So we'll work it through and as we go along, we'll show how it fits into a group's question. It's unlikely now that you would see something like this uh, within question number two or question number three. Okay. So it says the amounts to appear in the financial statement. So the financial statement, statement of financial position, statement of profit or loss, uh, Finland. So Finland could be the parent saying question number one. For the year ended, is it there, December 2015? Okay, so that's my closing year, isn't it? Uh, it says here we operate a defined benefit pension scheme. So as soon as we see that, we're thinking, right, what goes on my statement of financial position? Uh, what goes on my statement of profit or loss? And other comprehensive income. Well, on the SFP, we're looking at my pension asset, aren't we? Net off against my pension liability. And then when we're thinking about a statement of profit or loss on OCI, uh, we're thinking there, aren't we, about my, my service costs, the interest, maybe your return on assets. And then there within your other comprehensive income. We're looking at your measurement component. Okay. Right. Again, the measurement component would need a working. So I would then split my page into two halves to look at the working for my asset. And then the working for my liability. Okay. And again, what we usually start off with is the brought forward that is then reconciled, isn't it, to the carry forward. So uh, what have we got? Uh, it says there the closing balances on the scheme assets and liabilities at December 2014 was 60 and 64 respectively. So on my assets, I have 60. On my liabilities, I have 64. Uh, it then tells us about everything, doesn't it, to do with what happened in December 2015. So I've got my service costs. Is that nine and eight? So both of those are going to go to the statement of profit or loss, aren't they? So there I can find my statement of profit or loss, can't I? Nine plus eight. Is that there as 17? Okay. Uh, they've got the contributions paid in, the benefits paid out. So I will deal with those, won't I, in my adjustments for my assets and liabilities. And then I've got the fair value of the plan assets and the fair value of the plan liabilities. They're going to appear on the SFP, aren't they? So is that the 66 and 75? Is that the a net pension asset? Is that of nine? Yeah, nine. Okay. Excellent. Uh, we're then told, is it there that the yield on high quality corporate bonds is 5%? So assuming that all the transactions take place at the end of the year, uh, you have there that 5% to allocate to the assets and liabilities. So the interest is 5%, is it of 64? The return on the asset is 5% of 60. So my interest expense is 3.2. I presume then 5% of 60 is 3, isn't it? Okay. Not too difficult. Again, if we're thinking about it from a group's perspective up there, just a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, you would show the nets pension liability of nine so you would record that within your non-current liabilities uh the profit or loss figures the service cost the interest and the return 
Well, if Finland is the parents, they need to go through the parents' profits or loss. So the parents' retained earnings and the parents' retained earnings are in working five. So those three figures that you see up there would be adjustments to working number five. Clearly, if you're asked to prepare the group statement of profit or loss, they will be adjustments in the parents' column. And those adjustments in the parents' column would go respectively within the correct line items. So service costs within the operating expenses, interest and return within the financing section. Uh, the issue that you've got now is looking at the remeasurement components. So what you've got there on the asset, you have the return, which was three. And on the liability, the interest was 3.2. Okay. Uh, the other bits and pieces that you've got with regards to the liability were the service costs, weren't they? I think they were there. Was it at 17? Okay. Uh, bits that were missing, uh, the contributions that have been paid in are five. So you've credited the bank, debited your assets. Is that the as five? Uh, the benefits that have been paid out are six. So remember, that's the one that you really need to go through and give some thought to because you liquidate the asset and you liquidate the liability. Okay, so you remove the liability and you remove the assets. The only one that you need to deal with in both the asset and the liability. Okay. Uh, I can then total those up, can't I? So on the assets I have, is it 62? I have, is it 78.2? That's what we expect it to be. However, when we look at the carry forward, the actual as provided by the actuary, we have 66 and 75 there we go once we've done that we can then begin to put in your balancing figures so put the balancing figures in first and then think about whether it's a gain or a loss so 4 and negative 3.2 right let's think the assets have gone up from 62 to 66. Uh, that's what the actuary has processed at the end of the year. They should have been 62. They are now 64. So there's an increase in the assets. An increase in asset is a good thing. So that is therefore a gain, isn't it? Okay. Uh, if you look at the liability, the liability we expect was 78.2. It's now 75. So that reduction in liability of 3.2, again, is a good thing, isn't it? A reduction in a liability is a good thing. So again, we have a gain. So what we have there is we have two gains, one of four, one of 3.2. So we have a remeasurement gain in total. Is it there of 7.2? Okay. Excellent. There you have it. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, any questions? No, all reasonably happy. Okay. Uh, what we could go through and do uh, is we could, and we'll be clever here, clever or foolish, it's one or the other. You don't have to normally do this, but you can go through that. And perform a reconciliation of the opening to the closing pension asset or liability. What do we mean? Well, at the start of the year, we had was it an asset of 60 and a liability of 64. So the start of the year, there would have been is it a brought forward liability of four? At the end of the year, we have a carry forward liability. I think that was there as nine. So you don't have to do this. This is just a demonstration. It will lead us into what happens with regards to the cash flow as well. So what you've got there is we have a look. Is it at the figures that go there into the statement of profit or loss? 
So what you've got on your statement of profit or loss, if you were to, to net those up, 17 plus 3.2 less 3 uh, gives me there is that 17.2. as an expense, okay? So if I go through there and put the statement of profit or loss, that's there, is it as 17.2? Uh, if we then go through and think about what happens with regards to other comprehensive income, uh, what goes through other comprehensive income? Was that there as a gain, wasn't it? And we netted that off of 7.2. So that there is 7.2. And then what you've got is thinking about the, the statement of financial position. So what actually happens with regards to the cash? And the cash is looking at what has been paid into the scheme, hasn't it? Uh, what was paid into the scheme was, was 5. So that goes through there and reduces the liability doesn't it because it's increasing the asset and if you go through there and total that up I've, I've given myself just a little bit too much space as you've got the the reconciliation of the opening to the closing figure okay uh, again why is that important well what you've got there is that the cash that you've paid in that figure there is going to go into the statement of cash flows just be careful when it goes into the statement of cash flows it is an out flow because the company has paid it out but paid it into the scheme okay so that is an outflow uh, you could throw that there into your investing activities okay uh, uh, or alternatively then what you've got is the figures is it on your statement of profit or loss Again, they will need to go through and be adjusted to start thinking there. Are there any non-cash expenses? Well, I believe there are, aren't there? If you go back and have a look at the service costs, uh, those service costs are some non-cash expenses. So therefore, you would need to go through and add back those service costs to the profit because they reduce your profit without going through there and reducing your cash. So you would need to add back the service costs, the interest and the return you would need to adjust through either your finance costs or your interest income. Uh, so you would need to go through there and see if that has an impact essentially on the cash figure. Okay, Because again, neither that interest nor that return has been paid. Uh, so you would need to go through there and adjust it. Uh, through your expense and any opening and closing interest receivables or interest payables. But I think maybe I've just gone a little bit too far, uh, but doesn't do us any harm. I think the key bits to take on board from this example is from the statement of financial position, then that nine up at the top goes within the group SFP, doesn't it, in terms of the parents. Uh, the adjustments through profit or loss go into the parents' retained earnings. Uh, the other comprehensive income would go into the other component of equity of the parent. And then, by all means, if you wish, don't perform the reconciliation. But by looking at the reconciliation, we can begin to see that maybe there are some non-cash items and there are also some cash flows to adjust for within the statement of cash flows. But we shall leave it there. Uh, work through that example again and when you work it through forget about anything to go through and do with cash flow uh, just go through there and have a play around with the numbers that are there within the financial statements on the position statement and the performance statements make sure you can work out the expenses in profit or loss and then the most important bit is to work out the remeasurement component isn't it with the then there through your other comprehensive income other than that, I think there's loads of little examples that are there within your chosen tuition providers and revision kits, uh, and more importantly, the study manual. Have a practice at some of those. Other than that, I'll see you all in the next little session when we begin to look at some tiny little add-ons on top of the basics of pensions.